All right, welcome. We're going to do a little yin practice here on, uh, what the heck is it, Tuesday, on Tuesday afternoon. And I think we'll get started just in a seated position. So just take a seat with your legs crossed. It can be crisscross applesauce. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And just make yourself comfortable with the spine erect, nice and tall. Good. Feel the seat grounded. And you put your hands on your thighs, palms up, palms down, however you want. And we're just going to sit here for a little bit. Let your eyelids be heavy. You can close them or you can have them a little open. But let them be heavy. Face is soft. And first thing first here, how about breath? Just let breath move naturally for a bit. Whatever it's doing is okay. Whether it's short or long, or deep or shallow, just look at it, label it, leave it alone. That's kind of your primary point of concentration. So let's make it something to concentrate on by narrowing breath through the nose, just nostril breathing. And then just smooth out your breath. It's not necessarily going to be deep and long, but just smooth. And that's all you're doing is letting it move through your nose, keeping it smooth. Otherwise, it sort of gets quiet, less audible, more negligible. What we'll look at today in this practice is uh, uh, last week we looked at the root, wood are a chakra. This week we go next one up is uh, Svadhisthana. That's your sacral chakra or energy center. It has to do with some physical parts of your body, like the uh, bladder, kidneys, reproductive organs. On more of an energetic level, it's going to govern creativity, sexuality. Yeah. So we're going to find a, a little concentration in the low abdomen area today with the poses we've selected. But as always, anything that I offer is only suggestive. I ain't never seen a chakra, and maybe I'm just full of nonsense. So you know, anything that ain't working for you, just modify it or discard it. Same thing with the physical pose. If it ain't working for you, skip it. Switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Now, this area of your body we're thinking of kind of goes from cubic bone to belly button, a little lower than the midpoint of that line. Think of the very top ridge of your cubic bone, that, that area there, very deep in the abdomen. We're just going to use some poses and some movements to... Uh, Create some action in that area. They say where attention goes, energy flows. Let's pay attention. So we'll start out. You put your hands on the mat back behind your hips. You can point fingers at the wall behind you if that's if that's okay. Not adjust hands to where it don't hurt. Wrap your shoulders open, chest open, and then just sort of lean back, lift your breast, and. It's just a slight back bend, low spine, bending. You can drop your head back if you like. And we're just lengthening the flesh from belly button to pubic bone. And we're not going to be here as long as you would expect to get pose. It's just a moment. Yeah, just like that. Now we'll come on upright, nice and tall. Just bring back forward. We'll put hands in the mat in front of us. Walk them forward just a little ways. And then round your spine and drop your head and feel low abdomen kind of crunching, just kind of contracting, compressing. We're just getting a few breaths here. Now 
Now you just come up right, shoulders up over hips. <laughs> you put your right hand on the mat next to your right hip and then breathe in as you reach left hand up. Breathe out, just bend your torso to the right. And you might want to bend your left elbow, put a hand behind your head. It's a little easier, a little gentler. Kind of feel that area, the low abdomen, taking a side bend. Come on up right. I'm just going to reverse that whole thing. Left hand goes down next to your left hip. A deep breath raises your right hand, lifting all that stuff. Breathe out, bend to the left. Maybe bend your right elbow, put a hand behind your skull. And just mind's eye, looking at the low abdominal area, noticing sensation there. And you know the right side of your body feels a stretch. The left side feels compression. All right, come on up. Ooh, yeah. And we'll just put hands on our thighs. We're going to put all those directions together. So it's just sort of round your spine and then start to take a little bend to the right as you bring belly forward. Now start to bring shoulders back. It's a little back bend and then bring it around as we bend to the left. And we return to rounding the spine. Front is contracted and just continue. It's like a, like a torso roll. Just feel a little, a little stirring, a little movement. Low abdominal area. Maybe your breath moves with the motion. And we just reverse, start going the other way. We're just bringing some attention to that area we wanna, we wanna light up. We're not creating heat, certainly a little action. And then just come up right. Spine is tall. Just sit still for just a moment. Notice any sensations there. If you're not feeling anything, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not like uh, got to feel. Just try to feel. Uh, from here, we're going to come up to our knees. So you're like standing on your knees. You're going to have hips over knees and shoulders over hips. We'll step our right foot forward, the what's called like a kneeling lunge. And I'm going to put both hands on my right thigh. Use my left toes to walk my left knee back a ways until I feel left thigh stretching. And I'm just going to let pelvic floor drop down and forward toward my right heel kind of. And you feel lengthening in that area, low abdomen. It's nothing extreme, it's just a little lengthening. Now, it might be nice, I'm gonna use a block, but I'm just gonna put my left hand down. It just sort of makes this a little less intense for me. So we're getting a nice hip stretch. We're in a pose called dragon. And a nice thigh stretch. And we're just lengthening the, the front aspect of this fatty sthana area, the sacral area. That's a pretty cool word, fatty sthana. Translates to sweet or sweetness. So like if aromatherapy is your groove, if you dig on that, uh, patchouli oil might be nice. And sweet uh, orange. That's another one. Bergamot. There's one. That's a sweet one. Uh, mine probably wandering. We've been here for a little bit. So, again, just come back to focus on breath. And how about sensation? There's something else to look at.
you feel pain in your left knees, cushion in the towel, pillow, sure, appropriate thing. And it's okay to move for that sort of thing. You know, that's not a, a mindless, unnecessary movement. That's, that's important, necessary. Totally cool. It's one of those poses that really slows time down, at least for me. It gets a little intense. Long exhale can be very soft. Now, if it's not already there, put your left hand down and then your right hand down on the outside of your right foot, left hand on the inside of your right foot. All we're gonna do is take your time. There's no hurries on this. Start pushing hips back towards your left heel. Start bending your left knee as you start straightening your right knee. Whoa, take your time. Hmm. Uh, you can stop part way just for a moment. That's kind of nice. And then we straighten our right leg, we just maybe slide a block under our right sit bone, and sit all the way back, kind of sitting on the left ankle, maybe, maybe block. And it's just a half split. Now, you can keep your torso upright if you wish, or we can find some contraction in that sacral area, but walking hands forward and just taking a little fold over our right thigh. You don't need to go deep. You feel your hamstring, you can stop. Maybe you feel the back of your knee, Achilles. We found the edge, the place being too much, not enough. And kind of soften around it, settle in. And we just spend time in the stillness. And I say it like it's all matter of fact, but sure, that's the challenging part. Very nice to have something to concentrate on. It's grounded. This area of the body, this energy center, it has a color associated with it, orange. Maybe, maybe you visualize something orange. It's another option for the point of focus, concentration. Bring mind back to breath, to the color, to the sensation. And you just zero your concentration in on that point you've chosen. So you almost get lost in it. That's the quiet in the yoga, meditation. Sometimes I, I hear this, uh, Steve, I cannot meditate because I cannot stop my thoughts. You know, try not to get caught in that trip there. 
it's impossible to stop your thoughts. If your thoughts stop, that means you're flatlined, you're all done. It's not about stopping the thoughts, but rather not attaching to them, not, um, not getting involved. In that manner, they, they sort of exit just as easy as they enter. This repetitive <clears throat> steering of your your attention, you know, back to a point of your choosing, and thereby increasing your ability to hold it at a point of your choosing. You know, that's the work of the yogi. That's what the yogi does. And while it's a strong statement. It, said that it needs to mastery of the mind. And I don't know about all that, but I do know it will break thinking patterns that have been built over decades. It will start to break those down. It also leads to this groovy little trait called equanimity, non-reactiveness. You, know, you start to feel and experience things fully, completely. You're not stuffing or, or hiding. You're just not reacting, not having a meltdown, not breaking into a, a dance. You just sort of experience it. And I know I say it like it's no big deal, easy thing, but yeah, it's definitely a practice. Now we're going to just come on forward, right back up to our kneeling position. We're standing on knees, you could say. So once again, we're hips up over knees, and shoulders up over hips. Yeah, you got it. Step our left foot forward. And just kneeling lunge. Hands on left thigh. You just start walking your right knee back. And you notice how the top of your right thigh starts to lengthen. And then you let pelvis drop down and forward that you're going towards your left heel and there it is there's the lengthening of the low abdomen area now for me being up two hands on my thighs is a little intense so i'm gonna put my right hand on a block and it's not a big change but for me it's just enough to and now it's all right i'm okay here that's the thing with mods, you know, sometimes it can be just a very, very simple, small change. It gives you everything you're looking for. Return to your breath, return to your visualization or the senses. All that other stuff competing for your attention, it's just stuff. It starts to get a little ambient.
Now we'll have a, a left hand down outside of your left foot, a right hand down outside of your right foot. Now this transition slow like molasses. We we'll start pushing seat back towards right heel. Oh, take your time. I like to use block. I should slide it under my left. Sit bone. Hands can go a little forward or stay upright. Either way is appropriate. But as you go forward, you can put a little contraction in your low abdominal area. And we just sort of counter what we were doing with the prior pose. Some of the anatomy here, it's a, quite obvious you, you got to stretch on left Achilles, left calf, back of your left knee, hamstring. What about the right side? You got a nice deep knee bend. Depending on what you're doing with your foot, you might have something, some sensation in your ankle. Perhaps with that deep knee bend, you feel a little bit of thigh. And again, depending on foot position, maybe you feel the muscles around your shin. There is a sound or a syllable associated with this area. It is VOM. V like Victor, A like Alpha, M like Mike. VOM. Bija mantra, like seed, it's just one syllable. And you can mutter that over and over. It's something else to concentrate on. It's bomb, 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 bomb. Some folks that really works to kind of, again, something you kind of get lost in. Very, very deep concentration or meditation. Yeah, so just trying to give you various options for concentration. Different things work a little better for different people. When that uh, that notification or urge to, to move the shift, when it comes, maybe just ask real quick, am I in danger of injury? Am I in pain? And if the answer is no, maybe you can ask what it is. Am I feeling boredom, agitation, irritation? And if something like that is coming up, believe it or not, that ain't a bad thing. That's just you breaking the patterns. 
It's breaking the chains. So smile when that happens. It means your practice is working. Just come on back up one more time. Let's come up to hands and knees this time. Watch out, Sam. Watch out. Buddy. Now we were doing seated those torso rolls. Let's just do those on hands and knees. So just round your spine and a little side bend. And then kind of like cow pose belly down. And then another side bend. And you start smoothing it out. And you just would make rolls with your torso. And then reverse it. Just don't go in the opposite direction. Sort of think of that area you want to concentrate on. Bring your hips into it. It's pretty cool. Good. Now just neutral table, hands and knees. Walking feet back will come right down to our belly. We'll place our elbows below our shoulders, forearms contacting the ground. And it's just a slight lift. It's called Sphinx Pose. Now, with the flesh of your palms and your forearms, just pull your belly button away from your pubic bone. Let your shoulder blades glide down your spine. Yeah, there you go. There's your spot. Just sort of hang out and breathe for a little while. Uh, we find the muscular contraction certainly a little bit in the lats, or probably a lot in the shoulders, some triceps, some forearm and hand muscle. But otherwise, we want to just let everything else be soft. So take a, a mental gaze at your glutes. Are they squeezed or are they loose? Another one to consider is, is calves, thighs, are they soft, are they contracted? No. How about your face? Is it tight or does it kind of feel like it's sliding down the front of your skull? Yeah, it's soft. This is a pretty cool pose for realizing that while we are lengthening the front part of that low abdomen, that, that sacral area, we're also contracting the, the tissue area on the back side. So even though we're very still, we're providing plenty of stimulation for this energetic center. That word chakra it, uh, translates to wheel. So it's, it's another way to look at it as a wheel. And it's just your essence kind of turning, being directed to particular anatomy, particular psychology. Yeah. It's very subtle. One of the terms for it is the subtle body. Yeah. 
that quivering in your shoulders that's that's happening do not fret it's very normal well, with that um, involuntary shaking it's like can i just be still and leave it alone let it happen that's tricky for me i, I like to control it so i just keep practicing that continuous practice sometimes we find frustration why is there no progress why is this not how i want it to be blah 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 right so that's a great opportunity to practice a little acceptance and contentment Stay with breath, stay with sensation. Feel focused, deep concentration. From here, just bring your chest down to the mat and make a little pillow with the back of your hands, lay left cheek or right cheek. Either one doesn't matter. Just take a little rest. Just for about a minute. It's a back then. You're just gonna let it settle for a little bit. Neutralize your spine. So without a whole lot of extra movement, just roll to your back. You know, you're on your belly, you roll to your back. We got we got two options here. Probably more. I don't think all of them. We just extended. So let's contract that area by hugging your knees in. It is like child's pose, but you're on your back. Now, this is pretty nice. Or if you wish for something a little more sensual, more and more intense, put your palms down, arms along your side, a little pressure with triceps and palms into the mat, take legs straight up in the air. And all we're going to do is bring toes towards the floor above our head. It's called plow pose. And I said towards the floor because it don't matter if they touch or not. Knees can be bent or straight together or wide you can bend your elbows and put hands on your back to kind of help you stay in place so either way a supine child's pose or a plow pose and yin they call plow pose snail you can kind of see it looks like a snail with a rolled up shell I don't know. I know those old yogis smoked a lot of hashish. So who knows what they were coming up with with these names, right?
uh, this plow pose. It can be pretty intense. We're not going to be like a five minute hold in this. We're just going to be there long enough to get into the the stuff beyond your muscles, the subtle meridian tissues. It takes about 90 seconds to get there. 90, 120. Once we're there, we're just going to be there just a little bit of time, not long. Hey, look at that. Time is up. So if you're in plow pose, bring palms to the mat, strong triceps, strong palms and shoulders, gently, gently roll the flat on your back. If you're in the supine child's pose, release your legs to the mat again, flat on the back like a corpse pose. Good. And just for a moment, just be still here. Let the spine neutralize. While that's going on, you can watch the sensation. Notice the shift, the change in the nature of it. What was once compressed is now lengthened. What was lengthening is now not so long, it's slightly compressed. Awesome. Remaining on our back. Next pose also has a couple options. Let's bend our knees and bring our feet flat to the mat with heels real close to the sits bones. And take a hold of your block. Use uh, thighs and glutes to just lift your pelvis up off the ground. Low setting, flattest setting of your block. Put it below your sacrum and lower that down onto the block. Now, if you feel your block on the lumbar spine, just lift up and move it down. Let's get the sacrum, that triangular part of your pelvis, uh, squared up on the block. And here you go. Here's option A, supported bridge. You can hang out here. And notice there's slight lengthening in that low abdominal area. There's something ah, maybe a little more sensual, a little more sensation. And you just go to corpse pose. There's one leg at a time. Straighten one leg. Straighten the other leg. Now with both legs long and slightly separated. Arms down side, arms up. Now that low abdominal area is quite lengthy. But keep in mind, you, you got a little a detour in the line of your spine here. So find something non painful. If there's any pain involved with this, go back to bridge. Huh. I don't know you ever get that um, very, very subtle sensation of almost floating. It's like, it's so chill, you're so mellow. Everything's gotten so quiet. Like, wait a second. Am I grounded or am I floating? Maybe if you were visualizing something of the orange color, maybe you can turn that something into like a sphere. Make it turn. And you can watch that wheel turn. And if visualization is not your things, like seriously, some folks have a hard time with visualization. That is pretty natural. It's nothing to get frustrated about. There's other ways to concentrate. There's the, there's the voice. Bob, 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 bob. For me, that's an easy way to, to get quiet. Where there's breath. Just observe it. Just watch it. How it moves. How it feels. 
And of course, there's the physical sensation, same thing. Observe the nature of it. It's just tools to define the concentration. No different than pose is a tool to touch the body. Such stillness, such sweet quietness. You spend enough time with stillness, you might start seeing what the heck it is on the, just beyond that dark stuff behind your eyes. Maybe you start to hear that something that is so quiet that you never heard it before. Yeah, these are just maybe it's possibilities. Quiet in itself opens up countless possibilities. Find freedom called moksha, liberation. There's a more modern the very yogic author, Viktor Frankl, talks about that particular type of liberty or freedom. That moment before reaction, all the power is found. Take a breath, scent, stick. Talked about how men came and took everything away from them. Identity, possession, freedom, everything. Replaced his name with a number. But they couldn't take that, that place, a quiet place away from them. A place that's loaded with possibilities. Yeah, nobody can take that from them. So if it's cool with you, uh, if you're not, you're already there, the supported bridge. So hands on the mat, just gently lift your pelvis up and remove your block. And settle back down on the mat and then we'll just kind of roll to your side. I would like you to come up to a seated position, but just sitting upright. And we're kind of all over the place with this one. And with legs straight out in front. Hmm. Shoulders over, hips, tall spine. Breathe in and just reach arms up, lift everything in the world. And as you exhale, just go forward and forward and forward and then drop your head and just melt forward. If your hands are holding something, just let go. Lay your palms up. And then everything, everything except for your abdomen, soft. You have slight abdominal engagement to protect your spine. But everything else saw. Just give him Spadi Stana one more little squeeze.
But this one, it's like so many poses. It's got a lot of names. Call it uh, Pashimottanasana. In tradition, it's called Caterpillar. Uh, seated forward fold. Or just hanging out with my chest on my thighs. Breathing and quiet and calm. And granted, the situation might not be so calm that your body been half for an extended period of time. But you, you are calm. That's the, uh, the other tool that the pose provides. It's uh, like your yoga mat is a safe area, a laboratory. And the yoga pose can be a simulation of vicissitude, of challenge, of life. And now you have a really safe, calm area to practice being calm and steady in stressful situations. And, and it's a yogic science, it's some pretty cool stuff. So certainly not to get too picky about it. It's been around a long time. Pass through a lot of traditions. Nothing to stress about. I had um, suggested the palms be up a little bit ago. If that's where they're at now, rotate them to the mat. You just pop up on your fingers and start walking your hands back. We're going to roll up. Vertebra by vertebra. You got back issues. You might want to come up with a flat back. Your back will tell you which is the way to go. And from here, with that same sort of deal, just roll your spine down to the mat one at a time. The kind of like a spaghetti noodle came up right and then decided to collapse down the other. As bend our knees, bring our heels way, way up towards the sits bones. With knees and ankles touching right together, open arms out to the sides and just let your knees drop to the right. Oh. And I do believe that's our first twist of the practice. Wow, that's pretty cool. We're not hanging out here. We're just going to inhale, the knees come back center. Exhale, they drop to the left. Pretty sure we got that wheel turning pretty good. So just come back, knees center, ankles, knees touching. Just let knees fall away from each other. Soles of your feet come together, heels tucked up to, towards groin. Good, you're in a supine butterfly. Now with hands, you can put a hand on belly, hand on chest, or you have arms out wide. Yeah, lots of possibilities here. Just choose what feels stable and grounded and right for you with your arms and hands. Take a mind's eye scan of 
groin area, inner thighs. That strip from inner knee to groin to there. Anything gripping, holding, contracting. Just see if you can exhale it away. And if that doesn't work, it's okay. Just be open to the idea, to the willingness. Letting go ain't easy. Starts with some willingness. I'm just going to hang out here for a little while. But uh, at any point that this gets to be too much, you just straighten your legs out to a savasana, a corpse pose, and bring arms down the sides. But you can stay right here as long as you please. You can even stay in this pose for the rest of this this practice, if you wish. I'm just going to redirect our attention for a little bit. Let the body be where it is. You know, butterfly, the corpse, it's all good. You know, each week we cycle through this uh, cultivation of joy. Well, this week we're back to jhana yoga, yoga of wisdom. It's said that all wisdom comes from experience. Everything else is just information. And if that's the case, then I think it would be beneficial to make the most of the experience. How we do that, present, conscious, aware, paying attention, concentrate. So we do a little meditation of observation. If you would, imagine, picture a triangular area on your face from tip of nose to corners of mouth. And just bring every little bit of your attention to that triangular area. I'll just sort of make a notice of of what you feel in that space on your face. Maybe possibly you feel breath move. You know, I got whiskers, sometimes I feel those. And maybe you feel the, the nature of your skin. Oh, oh, the lips might be chapped, maybe you feel that. Slight, slight. Very subtle tingle, hum, buzz, that's always, always there. But it's quiet, you gotta listen real close. And hell, you might not feel anything at all. That's okay. I don't want you to worry about feeling something, I just want you to try to feel something. All benefit comes from the effort, not the acquisition. Just like poses. Just like awesome. You try. No mind of failure, success, or any results. You just do to do because it's there to do. Uh, you know, your mind is going to slide out of that space on your face. It's going to, your attention is going to latch on to something. And when it happens, it's okay. Come right back to the triangle. Just notice, oh wow, there goes it. No complaint, no judgment, comparison, none of that. It's just some acceptance, some compassion, and truth and kindness, and the discipline of the practice, the top. This is not a forceful, harsh discipline you find from drill instructor. Just a gentle, continuous engagement in what you choose to involve in. Yeah. Always steering mind. 
back to the point of choosing. You're building strength. You're building mental strength. You're cleaning house. Getting rid of old programming. False messages. making space for that light, that glow. Now, whether you're in this butterfly or in this uh, corpse, either way is cool. I encourage you to continue this game of how long can you keep attention in the space zone. Just stay with that for a while. There's no rush. As Ben asked, how long do I do this for? How long do I meditate? I find that it's usually good to just hang out there until I feel grateful. Once I'm feeling the gratitude, okay. All good. Yeah, you stay here as long as you like. But the practice itself is officially at a close. I like to offer you my gratitude and my love, Om Shanti. <laughs>